All right, Shalom. This is a brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash, the bonus to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. All right, verse 21 reads, The fear of the Lord goeth before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. Now, I want to go into a lesson on us um, finding manhood. All right, um, and this is based on, um, inspired by a comment that was left on uh, on my comment board through the Spirit and Pavi Hal Bashimel Shai. Uh, from a brother whose uh, handle's name is BH. All right, so his uh, YouTube uh, name is BH. And he uh, he asked a question, um, a few questions in one. All right, and I want to get the gist of his question. Um, he said here, he said, um, how does how does God expect me to do my purpose? And be all I can with him when my social media accounts is always being hacked or monitored, stalked by strangers, struggle with income, can't get happiness with a spouse because ladies always trying to block from other women. And the list goes on. I feel like my manhood is being taken away in order to be a man of God. And that's exactly what's happening. Um, but it's not manhood that you're losing. All right. What you're actually losing is vanity. Um, what we have been taught is manhood in this life is vain. All right. And that's why in Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, it says roughness and pride is the losing thereof. You know, this whole uh, machismo thing that goes on in America where um, Esau has put up this pedestal of what a man should be in his society. All right. It's really vanity. All right. Because his his idea of manhood is the sword death. All right. Being able to rule over other people with pride. That's his idea of manhood. And that's why you see a lot of these rap artists uh, portray the same traits as Esau. You know, they have these music videos and what they have in the videos, guns, and they show off their money. And they tell uh, other brothers that look just like them that they're going to uh, have sexual relations with their woman. And all of those things are roughness and pride, man. And that's what we've been taught in this society is manhood. And you're right. You know, you're losing these things. And you're not getting you're not having your way as far as the vanity of this world is concerned, because you are, if you can understand it and receive it and endure it. Most importantly, you're being uh, taken through the path, the straight gate to becoming a man of Yahweh by Shema Shai. And in order to gain. All right. Again, uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 21, the fear of the Lord goes before the obtaining of authority. So we are developing and um, perfecting, if you will. The fear and the service of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Before you have those tangible things that come with uh, being a, a chosen seed of the Heavenly Father, an honorable plant, as it says in Ecclesiastes 10, we have to go through rough ways first. All right. That city that has been set on the hill. All right. It's set on a wide place, but we have to do what? We have to go through the narrow first. All right. And that narrow is that straight gate. When you go into that word straight, it's a position or point of difficulty. All right. And this uh, it's the spirit, too, because last week or not even last week, last night, we were going into this that even with Esau. All right. When he uh, puts people in his wars. All right. Before he puts them in the wars, he breaks them down. He shaves their head. He puts them in basic training. He yells at them. He breaks down their mental, um, their mental fortitude. And then he builds it up according to his agenda. That's what the Lord is doing for us. We're going through rough ways. We're all suffering. All right. If you can understand it. Uh, no temptation that is touching you. All right. Matter of fact, let's get that. And James. All right. This is James. Oh, that's a beautiful chapter. This is James chapter one. And. Thirteen. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. For Yahweh by Shemal Shai cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And we all were sons of Jacob. 
All right. We're sons of Jacob. And, and that and that has a, a weight concerning our walk because we understand in the spirit that we're royal people. So our flesh desires the things uh, that accommodate that royalty. So, yeah, you want to you want to have the women, you want to have uh, resources, all of these things. But the scriptures talk about uh, getting wisdom so that you can reign forevermore. And this is the narrow part of our blessing. In order for us to get our inheritance, we have to go through this portion business before pleasure. And a part of that business is losing what we thought were valuable in this life. And in time, you'll see that it's all done, that you may win Hamashiach. But it's not going to feel like that at first, all right, because you're, you're adapting to the spirit, all right, you're being translated, all right, you're being renewed, all right. And uh, contrary to popular belief, being renewed, all right, let's go to that. This is uh, Romans, the 12th chapter. And the second uh, verse, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. All right. So you're tempted with the same lust of the flesh. All right. But you are being transformed, translated. All right. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's not an overnight process. That's why you don't have brothers who found out about the truth. And, and three weeks later, they're on the highways and hedges uh, being a speaker. It's a process of time. Because you have to be transformed. You have to be built up. You know, uh, e even Esau, he doesn't put people in basic training for two weeks and then put them in the war. They have to go through months, if not years of training before they're qualified to be uh, placed in those positions. That's where you're going. You're going through that, that basic training, if you will. And we're all going through basic training. Some have just been in it longer than others. All right. With, uh, with the apostles and elders being the, um, the uh, fathers of this basic training, if you will, on earth, man. And we have to go through these processes in order to receive that inheritance. All right. Now let's go to second Edris, the seventh chapter, and I'll just get the point. All right. Second Edris seven and nine. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. All right. Now, when you go up and I'll go up to verse uh, seven. All right. It talks about a city, which is the, the inheritance. All right. Having abundance, having uh, uh, wives and children and being able to enjoy it, being in a seat of power and not being reigned over instead reigning over other nations. But in order for us to get that, we have to go through the danger set before it. And a lot of that danger has to do with ourselves. All right. The brothers in Birmingham said this uh, and it stuck with me, too. This body is a, a cell inside the jail because a lot of your fights uh, really happen on the uh, battlefield of your mind. With you having to resist the temptations that your flesh desires. All right. So this is second edge seven and seven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a date. Now, nah, let's start at six. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And only one path between them both. Even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. If he never shall pass the danger set before it. How shall he receive his inher this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So we have to go through this narrow, all right, which goes back into that straight gate uh, uh, that Hamashiach mentioned in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the 13th verse. And that's us losing the things that we thought were valuable in this vain life that we have here under Esau Edom. And as we grow, Lord willing, we endure until the end. We begin to understand how frivolous and how unvaluable those things really are. And we get to, we begin to understand what is truly important. And that is the fear, the wisdom, the knowledge and the faith of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. The things that aren't seen, the untangible things, the things that money can't buy. And as we're perfected in those things will be the, the kingdom of heaven. All right, which comes with a physical kingdom will be given unto us under Hamashiach. 
Lord willing, we endure until the end and are part of that first fruit dominion. But that's what we're being trained up for. Life is about suffering. We all have to suffer for something. All right. It just so happens that the Lord has called you to suffer for righteousness sake. And at the moment, it may not seem um, profitable. All right. When you're first starting off, because it's not uh, chastising isn't joyous, but grievous. But afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And then you're going to thank the Lord for saving you from yourself. Because a lot of a lot of the things that we want in the flesh, if not most, all right, are really destructive to us. There are things that we may enjoy for a moment, but we may spend days, years suffering for it or paying consequences for it. And really, the Lord is saving us from those consequences by denying us of those things that we desire in the flesh, that we may perfect the spirit through his spirit. All right, because we have we all have plans, but the Lord is directing your steps. All right. And if you're suffering all right, if you're being chastised through the spirit and poverty by Shemel Shai, all right, you have to embrace it and endure it. Most importantly, the scriptures talk about it not being joyous. It's not like you're going to um, uh, take every situation that happens with a smile on your face. But if you understand what's happening, if you understand the process of chastisement, it'll uh, it'll sting a little less. And through the spirit, as you go through different trials and tribulations, you'll grow and you'll begin to see the lesson. All right. Inside of these so-called losses. All right. Now he says, I mean, by power of manhood is my power to conquer. So how can I do God will if I can't never breathe? I'm doing the laws and seeking the kingdom, but it feels like he wants me to do something more. But a wall is in my way. And that's the desire. Um, and, I, and I remember the um, elder in Boston talking about this. You know, all of us, us as sons of Jacob, we have this deep seated desire to create to be uh, to have uh, certain uh, levels of dominion. But right now we are learning the basics first. We're being built up on a foundation with that cornerstone being Hamashiach. We're being built on a rock. And before we can have all of those things that, that come with power and conquest, we have to learn like you can't go into a war without understanding the procedures. You can't go into the war without understanding the formations. The same thing goes for dominion and power. We can't just be given power because we know we're Israelites. There's a process that has to happen before we can get there. And this is the process that we have to go through. We're learning how to be real men, if that makes sense. Not the idea of manhood in this world, because the idea of manhood in this world really goes back to Esau's wet dream of being in complete control and being able to kill and murder people at will and rule over people with pride. We're learning true manhood. The understanding of true kings. Esau's a servant playing king. And everybody's chasing that as if it is actual royalty. It's not. You have a royal spirit. And because of that, our flesh desires these things that come with that royalty. But we have to, with patience, wait for it. Because it's not just about us having conquest and power. It's about the world benefiting from that rulership. All right. And I'll end it with this. All right. This is... uh. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. And I'm going to jump down to verse 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. The Lord is setting up. The first fruits to have dominion forevermore, not just a temporary blessing. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.